I saw a video yesterday that got some mixed reaction, and I watched it, and I've actually got a lot to say about it. I saw it on Twitter, and it was introduced um, with the following preface. Um, to the cowards hiding behind the anonymity of the internet and posting, Hitler was right. You got something you want to say? Why don't you say it to our faces? And that was written by a guy named Charles Weber, who seems like a really nice guy, and obviously um, he's against anti-Semitism and against Nazism. Uh, so I was interested in, in what he had to say and the video he referred to. Uh, let me play it for you now. It's not very long. It's only about a minute and a half. Take a look at this video that he was referring to. I saw what you've been posting. Hitler was right. I didn't teach you that. You hide behind your screen, spewing all this hatred and ugliness. You got something you want to say? Get out of the truck and say it to their faces. Does anything jump out at you there? At the end, it said the phrase Hitler was right was posted 70,000 times last year. I'm going to disagree with that. It was probably posted 70,000 times a day this year, ever since the October 7th massacre, when Hamas terrorists broke into Israel and basically reenacted uh, the worst of the Nazi Holocaust. It was actually the worst day for Jewish uh, death and murder since the Holocaust itself, let alone the rape and the hostages and the Stone Age level of barbarism. Um, that was like a starter pistol for this eruption of violent anti-Semitism around the world. And it really was in a shocking pogrom style. I think one of the most terrifying things I've seen since October 7th was in the Russian province of Dagestan, where people heard there was a Jew landing on a plane and they swarmed the airport, broke on out of the tarmac, and went Jew hunting. Well, there's been huge mobs like that around the world, not quite as violent as that, but certainly their language has been menacing. Uh, hundreds of thousands have marched in London, England. Tens of thousands have marched um, in Canada and in U.S. cities. We sent our reporter Alexa Lavoie to London about a week ago. And uh, I mean, here's one fella that she put a microphone to and... He refer he's a brown-skinned Muslim man, and Hitler didn't like non-Aryan races, but apparently he thought Hitler was right. Take a listen to this man praise Hitler. If the West feels so sorry for the Israeli Zionists, why don't they give a place in Germany? Why don't they go to Hitler's back garden and make an occupation there? Then they will know what kind of people these are. Why every so many hundred years, the Zionists get slaughtered? Because Hitler knew how to deal with these people. They probably made a program so they can create a, a state of Israel in the expense of Palestinian Muslims' blood. You know, a lot of the language uh, that was used by those protesters was similar, even if they didn't use Hitler's name. You're seeing swastikas turn up in numbers heretofore unprecedented. The entire... Uh, Canadian media freaked out when one agent provocateur briefly flashed a swastika flag at the trucker convoy uh, a year and a half ago, and no one could identify him. It was clearly a plant. The whole country was up in arms. I see swastikas at these uh, pro-Hamas rallies every single day. And the so-called anti-hate and diversity, equity, and inclusion police have nothing to say about it. Have you seen a single 
human rights commissioner in this country. There's 14 of them, uh, uh, 14 different human rights commissions, each one of with, which have millions of dollars in budget and dozens of staff. Have you seen a single one of them condemn the river of hate? I was thinking about Leith Maroof, that uh, uh, anti-hate consultant hired by Justin Trudeau and Ahmed Hassan and Pablo Rodriguez. And um, he was finally fired for writing some of the most atrocious anti-Jew hatred around. Here's some of his recent tweets. He talks about Jew satyrs, which is a made-up word about the crusades. Just crazy, crazy stuff. I put it to you that the anti-racism industry is actually the home of some of the worst racism in the world. Anyways, back to that one-minute video that I showed you a moment ago. You can probably see where I'm going with this. That's not who's going to these pogrom uh, marches. That's not who's saying uh, Hitler was right. It's not middle-class white guys with their dads in a $60,000 pickup truck, father, son. Hang it, it, that's not who it is. I'm not saying there are zero middle-class white guys with their dads uh, and the kid says something dumb online like uh, Hitler was. I'm not saying there's zero of them. I'm just saying I haven't seen a single one, and I've been looking at these protests either directly from inside them or our reporters. That's not who they are. Uh, and I think that that's part of the problem is we're looking with a magnifying glass for there's such a demand for Nazis on the right. And we have absolutely missed the fact that the racism, the anti-Semitism, and frankly, anti-white racism is on the left. And so let me tell you... Um, what happened to that tweet? Because I thought that that tweet, I mean, the guy who wrote it, he, he was sort of saying, yeah, man, come say that to my face. Actually, the trouble is these marchers in London and in Canada, the trouble is they are saying it to Jews' faces. They're attacking Jews, punching Jews. Um, a Jew was killed at a uh, pro-Israel. He was waving a flag in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago. And a pro-Hamas protester hit him. He fell down and died. And now that pro-Hamas protester has been charged with uh, manslaughter. Um, every single day in Canada, there are more assaults or shoot-ups. Um, so I, I think that tough talk, come say that to my face, that, that's actually happening. I think that a shy white guy, like in that, in that uh, TV ad, might not actually have the courage or the hatred to go and say it to a Jew's face. Maybe he is an internet warrior, but the trouble is there are far too many anti-Semitic haters who are throwing Molotov cocktails at synagogues, who are shooting things, who are punching people. And let me read to you a response um, by just some, I don't even know who it is on, on Twitter, who wrote this. Okay, Jewish communities have been pushing the exact kind of dialectical hatred against whites that they claim to want people to stop using against them. I'm deeply disinterested in giving the tiniest SHIT now about Western Jewish populations coming to the disturbing realization that those hordes of minorities that support flooding their country don't exactly like them too much. You want truth said to your face? There it is. So that commentator who I've, I've never seen on Twitter before, I don't know who it is, is saying the Jewish lobby groups, and that ad was paid for and circulated by a Jewish lobby group called StopJewishHate.org. It is true that many of the open borders multiculturalism advocates have been Jews and have been Jewish organizations, including in Canada. Now, that obviously doesn't mean every Jew. And one of the things I don't like about the tweet that I just read to you is that it's sort of a collective guilt, collective punishment. I'm a Jew who has always called for less immigration. I, I call for zero illegal immigration and less legal immigration. And the less legal immigration should be vetted for a number of aspects, including cultural assimilability. Do people assimilate and integrate? Do they agree with our Western liberal values of pluralism, nonviolent solutions to problems, uh, separation of mosque and state? I've been saying these things for 20, 25 years, uh, including when I was prosecuted by the Alberta Human Rights Commission for publishing the Danish cartoons of Mohammed. So I don't agree with the broad brush comment that all Jews are guilty 
of bringing in this Jewish hate. That's the Nazi concept of Selbsthass, the Jews brought it on themselves. I don't subscribe to that, but there is a truth to it that suddenly all these liberals, and obviously Jewish liberals, but liberals too, who are shocked, just shocked, that when they went to bat, bat for open borders immigration with no cultural fit, suddenly they're being devoured or threatened by it. So I think that this commentator I just read, and is, you know, I, I honestly don't know his, his real name. He, um, he, he goes by the artist formerly known as Eric. But what, the reason I point to his reaction is because Elon Musk replied to him and said, you have said the actual truth. Well, that set the cat amongst the pigeons. And immediately people said, uh-huh, Elon Musk, you're anti-Semitic. We proved it. No wonder you're allowing so much hate speech on Twitter. No, no, that's not true. I think that, uh, again, it's the people who take out a microscope and a magnifying glass to look for tiny traces of hate on the right who can't see the, the billboard-sized hate on the left. <laughs> ¶¶